Generally in science, you start with a theory, and you try to see whether or not you can substantiate the theory, either defend the theory or see that it has no merit. A good science study is you try to disprove yourself as well as prove yourself. And after great effort, if you cannot disprove yourself, then pretty much you've proven your point. Well, the point was this. Is it possible that the reason that we lose our hair and our skin gets droopy and wrinkled and our nails get brittle and fungusy and, and uh, uh, chipped and our gums bleed easily as we age is because we have done so little to feed the immune system that we've weakened our overall uh, biochemistry and that we've created multiple local infections. And because of these multiple local infections, what happens is when we do take in nutrition, we're not taking in enough nutrition to make an enormous difference. No, I think it's a natural aging process. I also don't think that nutrition can change uh, boldness, that I think boldness is in the genes. Throughout history, men and women have been concerned about their hair for religious reasons, for social reasons, for interpersonal reasons, for grooming. Sometimes it's long, sometimes it's short, sometimes it's bald. Well, one thing's for sure, no one looks forward to getting bald. No one's happier when they're gray than when they were not gray. And people don't like looking down at their feet in the shower and seeing a clop of hair. So I've simply asked a basic question. Is it possible, using major changes in our diet, lifestyle, and exercise and stress management, to reverse, slow down, or in some way limit this process. I think it's genetic. I started losing my hair when I was 18. No, I don't think nutrition would pay, uh, play a part in, in, in reversing balding or reducing the balding process or graying hair. No. Science says no, you can't do that. If it's in the genes, then it's inevitable. And indeed, up to this point, it has been inevitable. Yes, there's been some small change for those taking some of the medications, but the change is almost incidental. It's little peach fuzz that you'll get on your hair, but you pay a price. They're frequently side effects. It's a medication. When I started the study, my hair was falling out at a pretty, pretty fast rate, and it was turning gray. I was on the Rogaine treatment for five years, and the reason I had to stop it, my blood pressure went up excessively. And I was very frustrated. This seemed to be the last stop. The reason, again, why I wanted to look into this problem I had, which was falling hair or shedding hair and uh, scaly scalp and somewhat of uh, irritations uh, at the temples and on the crown. So um, the first thing I did was that I went to a dermatologist just to get some consultation and uh, she told me that I had uh, eczema, uh, dermatitis of sorts and that um, she gave me one direction. She said there's a hot product in the market called Minox Minoxidil? Minoxidil. And that I should try it and that there should be some results from that. I took her prescription and I had it filled and I tried it several months, but I did not see any results. And not that I thought it was a waste of money, but it was an attempt. And I did not see any results. Well, I want to see, could I use no medications, no magic panacea, no silver bullet, nothing that you wipe on the body, no salves or potions or shampoos, but instead rebuild the body chemistry. I came to the hair study group because uh, I was losing, uh, my hair was falling out, it was white all over, and uh, I came to get in the study to try to help that. I came to the hair study because I had graying hair and I was losing some of my hair on the side. I started noticing my hair falling out about 29, 30. Actually, it was uh, thinning quite a bit up front and in the back. I started a hair protocol. Uh, I was in need of, um, my hair was thinning very badly in, in the front part here, to the point that I started visiting the hair club for men and so forth. And um, upon my visit there, they were going to patch my hair with some other hair or do a transplant and it, it was just undesirable so I decided to um, uh, forego it and just 
be left with uh, going ball, the male pattern baldness. And I went to a barber, and I had my hair dyed, and very strong dye. And not long after that, my hair started falling out. And I knew that uh, I'd already gone through everything, including a dermatologist who had uh, diagnosed that I had androgenic alopecia and telogenic effluvium, which basically means I had, made, I had uh, some androgenic hair loss, and a lot of my hair was falling out before it should have. Hairs that were only an inch long were falling out, as well as full-length hairs. Um, I even took cortisone scalp shots because I was in such dire straits because I lost about 70% of my hair. My hair was gray and thinning and receding at the, uh, at the forehead on both sides. And this prompted me to join the hair study. If your gene is here that predisposes you to graying, thinning, and balding, and your diet and lifestyle is here, and if you're eating what is considered the all-American diet, even taking some supplements and you haven't improved, then what do you have to do to get above the genetic predisposition? In effect, you exceed the genetic threshold. You create a new biochemical paradigm. That's the purpose of the study. That's what we're going to explore in our documentary. I'm Gary Knoll. Join us now as we take an in-depth look at hair growth, a natural approach. Can you find a correlation between uh, what a person eats, their diet, their health, and their hair? Oh, definitely. I see when they eat well, their hair is shiny, it's healthy looking, and it shows. It's a reflection of the way they eat and the habits they have and where they're well rested. And they seem to show everything on the hair. In traditional Chinese medicine, hair is viewed as the sign of health of the kidneys liver and blood. And so if you have healthy hair, you have healthy kidneys, liver and blood, and healthy energy in the body. In America today, there's an overabundance of junk food, processed food, low energy food, and caffeine, sugar, uh, foods that people become allergic to, wheat and others, especially also dairy and cheeses so that the elimination of these is very helpful, not just to grow more hair, but to be healthier and to have a totally better uh, longevity and a healthier lifespan. When something goes wrong, and so many things could go wrong, and as alternative physicians and clinicians, we have to look at the whole picture and not just the symptom of hair loss. And there's so many things that can go wrong, whether it's an autoimmune response when the body begins to attack its own cells, whether it's a accumulation of too much debris with, in the scalp, whether it's an infection on the scalp, or whether it's too much chemicals on the hair from all of the hairspray and the blow drying and the abuse from the environment because of the chemicals in the air. There, there's a loaded effect in everything that we don't do when we live in this society with the pesticides that we eat and the depleted soils, that we have to constantly replenish the body and allow the cells and the biochemistry of the body to function optimally at all times. And that's not taking one vitamin a day. It's totally impossible to do that. You have to constantly replenish the system with nutrients at all time in order for everything to work optimally. The hair and skin are the last on the list of priorities. Your heart, your lungs, your kidneys, your brain, your liver, these are primary. So the body in its own innate knowledge says, if I have all these infections and I have all these cancer cells and all these viruses and bacteria, whatever does come in, I have to selectively take what I can and fight those battles first. If anything should left be, be left over, then I'll give it to the hair. Well, the average American never has anything left over. They're always drawing more out of their body than what they're putting in. There's always a greater assault against the body than the benefits to the body. For hair health and overall general body health, what you want to do is to consume about six 12-ounce glasses of freshly prepared green juice a day and greens can be mixed in a variety of uh, substances. You want to use organically grown vegetables. 
the organically grown vegetables, first of all, are going to be free of pesticide, chemical residues, artificial fertilizers, etc. But also, because of the fact that the soil in organic farming is very vital, very alive, and mineral and nutrient rich, the vegetables grown in this soil are going to be far more vital and far more health promoting than standard commercially produced vegetables. Your hairs are fed with bloodstream. So if there's any deficiencies in, in that area, it will be carried through with your hair and your skin. And whether you lose it, you know, you can lose more or it could be dull or brittle. You know, so nutrition has an effect on, on everything in your body and your hair is it's kind of it's an appendage of what's going on. You, know, you can tell deficiencies in who you are for your hair. I would assume for thinning hair, maybe in some cases it would it might have um, an effect. Nutrition would have an effect. No, I think it's strictly hereditary and in your genes. Can you tell when a person smokes and drinks and is overweight and they eat garbage? Can you see it in the hair? Oh yes, definitely. When they have medication when they've had an operation, everything shows on your hair. They seem, if they eat well, their hair is well. If they're sick, their hair is sick. It's sort of reflection. A healthy person has healthy hair. Here's the body's immune system. On a scale of one to 100, diet makes up about 15%. Exercise, about 15%. Supplements and juices and herbs, about 10%. Stress management, 10%. Our belief systems, our values, 50%. When any one of those is out of balance or deficient, then we suffer. So if you've been processing illness and disease with negative thoughts and anxiety and stress and environmental pollution and not living a life that you should and being in relationships that are unhealthy and working in environments that are toxic, now on the disease side, you're up around 50-60 but all together your immune system is maybe 30. So you're never gonna be able to get healthy enough by doing just what most people do or what your doctor tells you to do to exceed your disease level. So what I did was I had to make major changes, radical changes in behavior, in stress management, in exercise, in detoxifying and cleansing the system, cleaning up their home environment, cleaning up their diet, getting rid of all sugar and meats, anything with a heartbeat or a face, getting rid of dairy and wheat and uh, all the refined carbohydrates and deep fried foods and preservatives and pesticides, they had to get rid of all of it. Caffeine, alcohol, get rid of all of it. I'm not saying moderation, I'm saying none was allowed. Now in the place of all this that was taken out, that at least stops the body burden from being overwhelmed chronically. And then in its place you put things that are enlivening, building, enhancing, both the immune system and overall metabolism. Their weight came down. One guy lost 100 pounds. Energy levels went up. They detoxified. So what we saw was they started off here on disease and nutrition, and over a period of nine months, it shifted because they potentized. And once they exceeded the disease level, way up they went. So the more people did, the more they benefited. So the theory was, can we exceed our disease level with the type of program that uh, we could implement? The proof is in the results. Listen to what the people have to say. About 10 years ago, I had hair transplants. The process took about eight months. In the third session, I started to notice that the hairline at the front was starting to lose density. I spoke to the doctor about it, and he didn't seem to know what to do about it. Hair is such a means of expression that some people feel by the loss of it, they lose a certain amount of that expressiveness. So they try to compensate by various wigs or clubs or any other means that to cover that up. I had an investment in, uh, in my plugs. Well, people react to hair in different ways. I mean, yeah, like in, 
New York is actually nice for that because in New York you can kind of like wear any kind of hair that you want. Then people pretty much treat, treat you the same, the same way. In some different places, it's, it might, it's kind of like um, the hair is, is like the first thing that someone sees, so it, or they already like make a judgment out of that. Yeah. It's got to be easy. Um, luckily, I have some stuff going on with the gray, so it looks kind of fun, but um, basically, like it's short, simple, in, out, do this, I'm done. <laughs> I was interested in the program because. I was losing hair in this area on both sides and, and I also wanted my, the, my hair was getting white so I wanted to be a little darker. So I joined the program and following his protocol and the changes in the diet and much more because his philosophy is very good, uh, it's very positive in so many ways and I got results. My hair is growing all around this area. It's, it's, it's growing. The color of the hair is much better, much darker now. And my, the, my hair is thick and very healthy. Okay, I joined up the hair study program so that I can have the gray hair turn black when I heard Gary spoke about it on the radio. And it was very good experience for me. I started in the program about a year now. I kept up with the program by juicing every morning, making sure I have my six green glasses of juice, taking all the supplements, and doing some exercises, as he said. However, I noticed that my hair, the texture of my hair changed. Also, that the gray were no longer spreading all over the head. And the part right at the temple that had dropped off before I joined the program, I noticed hair started growing. But as I kept looking, I noticed instead of coming back white, it was getting black. So I have little, little black scattered hairs all over by the temple area. I don't have any falling out of hair as I used to, which is terrific for the drain in the bathroom. <laughs> and um, I felt that the, uh, my hair got more body, stronger, and uh, it's, it's growing much better. I'm impressed. Um, humorously, I must say that there is even additional growth in my ears. In my hair, which had sometimes fallen out in the shower or when I comb it, has stopped completely from falling out. It just, it, I don't know what happens. I mean, it doesn't, it doesn't ever seem to leave my head unless it's being cut. And uh, it's cut more frequently now. So that's one thing. I took chlorophyll powder six or seven times a day with, with good water and, and the aloe vera, the whole leaf aloe vera. And that seems to work, have worked the best. Uh, at times my hair has a much greater shine at, at times. It looks more alive. It, it actually, when I work with it now, it looks like it's part of me, which I thank the program too. I noticed that the white hair was breaking off and uh, brown hair, dark brown hair was coming out from the place where the white hair was. And uh, of course, I had a bald spot. There were a few little sprigs in there, but it didn't get long. And uh, the, <clears throat> the hair looked more lively. And all of the hair in the back turned brown, just about. But uh, what I do, I comb the hair on the side up over my bald spot, so that's why the white hair is at the top, uh, where the brown hair is. But I also got hair on my arms. I never had any hair on my body. My body was perfectly clear. But now I got hair coming out on my arms, and the mustache grows too fast. The sides of my hair started to grow out, and my hair started to turn color. It, it regained its, its color back. Darker, but it regained its color back. I guess the most 
the best thing that happened was why I'm going to keep it up forever, especially the green foods, is that I have living, growing hair that turned from gray to brown. And I was starting to pull out some gray hairs around my, framing my face. And I've decided to stop doing that because I did it a few times and I wound, wound up finding out that they were brown um, at the roots. When I looked at them and they were up here, they were gray, but down here they, they weren't. Today, I would say that 75 to 80 percent of my hair has grown back in and continues to grow back in. After having followed Gary's program for a subsequent nine months, I realized that with the addition of all of the green chlorophyll foods, that that made a tremendous difference. For me, it was amazing results, even though my hair is not fully, you know, full, it's not filled in fully, but I had amazing results. In terms that my hair is richer, in terms of color and thickness, and, uh, and I'm able to comb it and brush it, and it's not falling out anymore. It's, uh, it's no longer thin. You know, the, stra it's, the strands have come back. One thing I've noticed is that the sides and the back um, has grown uh, more rapidly than before the protocol has started. When I don't shave on the weekends, I notice that my mustache is coming in black and my cheeks and underneath my chin is coming in black, whereas it was white before. And uh, I feel very good. Around the fourth and the fifth month, um, I started noticing that my hair was falling out less and less. Um, my eyebrows were no longer falling out, and my skin was not as pale as it used to be. Like around the sixth month, that's when I looked in the mirror one morning and I saw this white pale fuzz on the top of my forehead. And then I looked and I had actually had new hair coming in. And my hair was also um, falling out a lot less. There were just a few strands in the bottom of the um, basin every time after I was finished washing my hair. Now I'm happy to say that the hairline in the front has started to fill in again. My results have been good. They've not been spectacular. But I didn't lose the hair all at once, so I don't expect to get it back all at once. Uh, my hair is uh, much fuller. Um, the areas are, full, are basically just growing in. The color of my hair is much improved. Uh, the texture, I had real dry, brittle type, brillo kind of hair. <laughs> and it's changed considerably. I'm very pleased with the uh, changes I've seen in my hair growth. I haven't noticed any appreciable growth on the top of my head, but I have noticed that my beard has begun to darken dramatically. But it has gotten lighter and much darker, thicker, uh, more vibrant, uh, texture is different. I can take a shower and not a drop of hair gets into that drain now, not a drop. I can comb my hair, and there's no hair on my comb. I start uh, having new hair growth in the back and in and around my temples. Also, my gray hairs in my temples have disappeared, which is a nice thing. And generally, I feel good all over. I sleep about an hour or less, and I have um, a much higher energy level. Um, this is the first time I've been honored to view the protocol for Gary Null's um, hair study and it seems that all the bases here are covered. When I spoke earlier about the chlorophyll, how important chlorophyll is in the green drinks, um, he has more than aptly met that requirement with six scoops of chlorophyll rich powder spaced throughout the day. Now in a free radical pathology what is going on is that a, a molecule loses a, a hydrogen um, electron and what it does is it attack other healthy cells like sort of like if you can picture Pac-Man trying to regain that electrical balance and in doing so it destroys healthy cells and that's what's called the free radical pathology what an antioxidant can do is lend a free radical a hydrogen molecule you know without destroying itself so the free radical pathology is stopped within its track However, once that pathology begins, they, 
duplicate themselves by the billions within a minute. So the antioxidants have to constantly be replenished throughout the day. According to this protocol, that's precisely what's being done. My daily routine is I, as I wake up in the, when I wake up in the morning, my first thing I do is I have to walk the dog Jenny because once you wake up, you have to take her out. While I'm walking the dog, I will do my breathing exercises while she smells practically every blade of grass. When I return to the house, I give her fresh water, her cabbage, her cucumbers and cauliflower and broccoli. As, as soon as I'm finished with her, I go straight to my meditation because I must meditate every day. It relaxes me, it sets the tone, set the pace, and it makes my mind light and fresh so I can meet the challenge of the day. Um, at 12 o'clock, I listen to Gary Noel, Natural Living sh Talk Show. It gives me the midday boost. But we frequently don't have the confidence to say that. We become so intertwined in multiple convoluted codependencies. And then one day you wake up and you realize all the games and you just stop it. You put the brakes on, you say, there's got to be more to living than making a living. There's got to be more to life than all the problems and hardships that I've been immersed in. There's got to be a purpose and meaning that's unique to myself. What is it? What's in the fruits and vegetables that's making a difference in health? And I found it was in the phytochemicals. If we want to consider drugs as a potential genetic overcomer, look at what happened with Rogaine. Unfortunately, I think there are better ways to deal with the problem. Rogaine has been somewhat effective, but I think on a mild degree compared to other potential avenues. So we look toward food. Now, first we look toward f uh, fruits and vegetables, and we have the availability to juice our vegetables and our fruits, but we have a big problem, and that is we don't quite get enough concentration since the amount of cellulose in vegetables and fruit is quite high. Therefore, we have to go beyond that, and there has been a breakthrough relatively recently whereby there is a method of extraction of the phytochemicals in fruits and vegetables via a very low temperature process which preserves the essential vitality of the food. It is of great interest that there are at least 100 phytochemicals per food. And in this study we gave patients as many as 15 or 20 separate fruits and vegetables which were extracted via the low temperature method. This would then give them a total of approximately 1,000 phytochemicals per day. To review, why was this so important? Primarily because we have a genetic threshold, and this for the first time was exceeded. We overcame the difficulties of the genetic threshold. And how was this done? Well, it was done because there was a multiple assault on the problem. It was not only removing bad food, it was not only being vegetarian, it was not only reducing stress, it was not only exercise, but included a multifactorial total program. The future of American medicine has to move toward multifactorial and we have to not be burdened by our genetic threshold, we must get above it. And this was done for the first time. This study therefore establishes a new scientific paradigm whereby a genetic difficulty, destiny, male pattern baldness, graying of your hair, part of your genes, however, we can overcome it. And we can do it without medication. And it is not that difficult because the phytochemicals are probably man's medicine of the future. We're here in the health food store in New York City where hundreds of people every day come to buy their green drinks and their juices. This is what's lacking in the American diet. This is where you can get your phytochemicals, your chlorella, your minerals, your antioxidants, all of the things that you need to replenish the immune system, the skin, the hair, the nails, your endurance, whatever it is that you need. If you drank at least three to five glasses of fresh juice a day, you'll see the difference immediately. 
Now this is the stuff you need to replenish the minerals, to give you the antioxidants, to give you the live food. This is what's missing in the American diet. This is what's missing in your daily life. This is the live green food that you need. Drink it all day long. Another way is through acupuncture in stimulating the meridians along the scalp and that run to the scalp. In traditional Chinese medicine, an important part of stimulating hair growth is stimulating the meridians that go to the, to the head. Some of these meridians are the gallbladder meridian, what's called the GV, the governing vessel, or the dew channel. We have the triple heater meridian. And what I'm going to do is stick some very thin, sterile disposable acupuncture needles into the scalp a very small amount to stimulate the circulation to these points. It's also very good for men who are experiencing male pattern baldness, which is right around the gallbladder meridian here, to start needling up in that area. I'm twisting the needles to stimulate the flow of the meridian. When you turn to the right, twisting, it's tonification. When you twist more to the left, it's sedation. And so we're trying to tonify the meridians to stimulate the blood flow and the circulation to the scalp. This isn't painful. The needles are very, very thin, and it, it doesn't hurt. And they go in just about an eighth of an inch. And then we leave these in about 20 minutes at a time, 20 to 30 minutes. And we might stimulate them during the treatment a little bit. And acupuncture is also very relaxing because it releases endorphins. And endorphins are the brain's natural opiates. So it's a very nice time for people to just relax. And especially for the people who are experiencing hair loss due to stress, this is a really good thing for them to be doing as well. So it's at getting at the cause, the root of the problem. Now I might also stick other points in on the body to help strengthen the kidneys, to strengthen the liver, to strengthen the blood, to help with the circulation as well on key points around the body that work on the internal aspect. I've seen people whose hair has gotten very thin, come back to full healthy head of hair. I've seen people who have had the male pattern baldness start to experience growth again in those areas where there was hair loss. And the hair that they still have would get fuller and fill out the areas more. I would recommend the acupuncture once a week for a series of 10 sessions, then take a break, and perhaps do another series of 10 sessions. I had an incontinence problem. My wife and I go to Central Park every Sunday, and we uh, race walk. Gary, and we race walked for about five miles. In that five miles, I had to run from the woods about ten times. Now I can go two and a half miles without uh, running off in the, away from the road. And uh, I just go, I go to the bathroom at two and a half miles. I don't have to go again until I get to the end of my run, of my walk. In spite of reduced sleep, I'm not fatigued during the day, and I can carry on normal activity. That is getting between like maybe four and five hours sleep is normally I want to sleep a little longer in the morning. Um, so I feel good about that, that I can get to bed very, very late and get up very, very early and not feel fatigued during the next day. So I think that's very, very positive. Um, also, even though I'm an older person, I think I have pretty high energy. What I go in for is a lot of long distance bike riding. I usually do 50 miles on Saturday with a bike group and another 50 miles with a Jersey group on Sunday, and I feel fine. I, 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 I'm not fatigued. My muscles get fatigued, but overall I feel fine. I don't, I don't take a nap afterwards to carry on normal activity. I, I take my shower. So I just, and, I, and I've also did two mar marathons. That's, uh, that's uh, uh, bike rides in excess of 100 miles each. And I feel great at the end of the ride. Tired, muscle, muscular tired, not, not otherwise tired. More energy feel more energy, you know. Uh, 
my immune system has gotten stronger. Uh, I have a history of uh, heart disease in my family. Uh, my parents died young uh, from heart attacks, and, and my brother, who's five years younger than I am, uh, has already had four angioplasties. Um, and I always had borderline high blood pressure. But after being on the study for only four months, I found that my blood pressure dropped 25 points. I'm talking about the low number. It used to be 95, which is borderline high blood pressure, uh, dropped to 70, which I've never seen in my entire life. Additionally, um, I also noticed that my skin was getting a lot more resilient. Um, when I get cut, it would heal a lot faster. And um, another thing that I saw was that I just had more energy um, as I was, I, was, I was walking around through life. I wasn't as tired as I used to be. Um, probably a lot of that had to do with my giving up my old bad habits. And so that I had more energy. And so that I can see now it's um, working along fairly well. And um, I have this, this new hair coming in. It's growing longer, slowly, but it's still coming in. Um, right now it's beyond my hairline, um, right outside of it and growing there. And so hopefully, uh, if I can continue on with this, um, we'll see some even more spectacular results. My energy levels through the ceiling. I'm with the running club now, and we're planning on doing this marathon. I feel fantastic. My stress, I deal with stress so much better. Um, more of a calm guy now than I was before. In terms of um, stamina, I have a lot of stamina now. Um, I can. Before, when I wake up in the morning, I had like a load, you know, and I had to kind of shake it off, but now I can just easily get up, you know, before the clock even alarms, I'm up. It's like a uh, first sign of uh, light, you know, I'm just up. I, um, the one thing I have really noticed is my awareness level. Um, things that I was uh, not perceiving or trying to understand now is so simply, you know, filtered through my brain and I can uh, pick up the positive things and I just let go of the negative things. I pay attention to that, what really matters and those things that don't matter, they just kind of, uh, they don't register. So my awareness level is very, uh, it's, it's different. I didn't go to lose weight, but it so happened that I lost a lot of weight and, I, and it felt good and I looked good with the slimness instead of the little bulk that I had loved. One thing I've noticed uh, immediately actually within the first few months is increased energy level. Also, um, I have less colds and uh, as far as uh, allergies are concerned, um, that's not a problem anymore for me. You know, around the season usually I have problems with the sneezing and the watering guys. That's been lessened um, dramatically. Uh, with my energy level getting much higher, within about two or three weeks' time, I started noticing that my waistline was trimming down, which is a nice thing. Uh, my complexion in and around the six-month period, uh, I started getting much more color where I hadn't had color for years in my cheeks and in my face, and now people comment that I've got nice skin, and I started just feeling better in general. The hair loss and the graying. It's a, it's a marker of aging, and if this process was to continue, I know how I'd look like my older relatives with total hair loss on top with a white fringe. And the fact that this is an aging marker, and of course the uh, protocol is, is not a topical protocol. I've taken it internally, so it's affecting every part of my body, that this marker of aging has been reversed. I'm excited about what might happen with all the other organs. You'll find your essential fatty acid supplements in your local natural food store. You'll find not only will your hair become quite beautiful and lustrous as a result of taking them regularly, but also your skin. It helps the functioning of the hormonal endocrine system as well as the immune system. Also, they're delicious on a salad. <laughs> My complexion has improved a great deal. My skin used to be very dry. Even when I cream it, now I don't even have to cream it, and it's very supple. I sleep much less, but yet still I have a lot of energy during the day. My skin is, uh, is softer, almost like a baby skin. 
and uh, I have much more energy. Uh, the whole program with the exercise, I exercise and I enter uh, all the race walking competitions in the local area. And I also lost about 40 pounds within the last year and a half, and a lot of it since I started this program. And I have no trouble, I'm a vegetarian, a vegan, and I have no trouble staying on this program. My energy improved a lot. My nails also, they were very, very uh, soft, and they used to break very easily, and now they are very strong. Well, another benefit which surprised me was uh, every winter I was getting a cold. Almost like a seasonal thing. And I haven't been getting a cold, meaning throat and chest cold. And I believe that the new habit of better diet is part of that. And through this protocol, everything seems to have gained uh, some beneficial new directions in my energy. Uh, I've lost 15 pounds without trying, and I was not an overweight, just naturally. Uh, I need much less sleep than I formerly did, and I have more energy, and generally my health is very good. It was good prior to my joining the study, but I think it's even better now. One minor thing I've noticed also is that I used to get a athlete's feet. I don't get that anymore, even though I'm exposed to the same environment in the health club that used to infect me. I think that I am not a failure because I have not grown my hair back. I think that will happen later, but I, I, I think this program has been a great, great success for me in many ways. <clears throat> Eating all those dead foods was it, the, the, the dead things were being incorporated into my body and I was aging way beyond my years. I'm 40. I'd say at the, at the worst my body was probably in its late 50s. I'm not 40 yet in my body but I'll tell you it's been coming back. It's been coming back. All the live things that I've been putting in my body for the last year and some months have uh, greatly, greatly helped me. I mean I don't I sleep less, I have vitality, I'm much more productive in my life, I'm, I'm a writer, I'm, I'm working on three projects at once, it's crazy, and I love it. And um, <clears throat> I don't get up at night to urinate, my blood sugar is, is, is right where it should be, as far as I can tell. And I've lost, um, in round numbers, about 100 pounds. Kept it off and have been able to, on really wobbly knees and, and a bad back, stemming from the accident, I've still been able to to walk and exercise and, uh, and uh, it's taken a lot of pressure off those things too to lose the weight and it's continuing. I've plateaued a few times but whereas before when I hit a wall like that and I, and I would stay there even though I knew I was doing some good things I would get discouraged, depressed and uh, it would affect the way I cared for myself. Now I, I just feel so positive about it. It's, it's an adventure. I, I see, I, I see that what's happening. I accept what's happening. I don't get down about it. I, I want to see how long this, this new plateau is going to last and what I can do to shorten that time. Because I know it's, gonna, it's not going to be a permanent condition. It doesn't get me down. And the adventure continues. Increased circulation to the area is very important, so exercise. Um, is, should be part of any program to support the body nutritionally. And again, back to giving the constant supply of nutrients to the body, concentrated forms of nutrients uh, to the body all throughout the day, not just with a multivitamin, could help reverse any disease process. Juicing is one of those things that give a concentrated source of nutrients within a very convenient um, uh, glass of juice that you can get five to ten times more nutrients in a, in a glass of juice than you would ordinarily by eating uh, fresh vegetables. Of course they should be organic because you don't want more of the byproducts of the pesticides uh, that you would get over in a supermarket kind of vegetable. So organic is very important. I wish to emphasize that the American diet does not include enough chlorophyll. And this sounds a little bit simplistic. Who cares about chlorophyll? 
It's from Greenplay and so on. Chlorophyll is a major part of the phytochemical family and has many, many benefits. It detoxifies the body. It gives us nourishment. And we will learn as we go along, as American medicine moves more and more toward phytochemical intervention, that the chlorophyll family are our friends. In the morning, I drink, I drink my first glass of juice. And then I drink the rest of my juice during the rest of the day. I make sure by six before six o'clock I've already taken the full 32 fluid ounces of juice. My fresh produce comes from Urban Organic in Brooklyn. They deliver at my door every Monday. I take the pleasure every morning and wash them, clean them, and then juice. So I juice cauliflower, kale, broccoli, cucumbers, apples, carrots. So I make my 32 ounces of green juice every day. Then I will make some naltrim, bananas, a little mussel, and I take that. Sometimes, if I'm hungry, after that, I will eat my big meal then. Whatever I had from the day before, or I may try to make something fresh while I eat a little fruit. After that, but the days go so quickly, after that I may relax or sometimes I get a, the inspiration to write. So I have my book in which I write what comes from within. Many times it is very inspirational, many times it's a lesson for me, something I have to look back, something I have to do, some changes I have to make. I am 52 years of age and I feel great. It's just wonderful using the protocol, staying with the protocol, making it part of, part of my life. It has taught me more discipline. I see so much results from my skin, the hair, my attitude. I can deal with more stress. I can handle things more fluently. I can sit in my meditation for more than an hour. So it's just wonderful. There's juicing and drinking a nice fresh glass of juice every morning and sticking with the protocol. And all these centuries, we believe that we had to wear wigs or cover our heads, uh, or that our hair falling out was inevitable. No, it's not inevitable. I'm very impressed with the Gardinol philosophy. Also, it's not only that he's trying to do so good for so many people with, with this uh, hair study, not only with the hair study, in so many other ways, but he's so positive and it's changing so much in our beings. The program has definitely worked. Um, I want to take it to another level with the uh, juicer and, uh, you know, just things like meditation and just the, the, the nutrition part of it is one thing, but when, once you get through that, it's, uh, that's kind of easy after a while, and then you got to kind of move on to other things with your, your mind and stuff like that. You know, it's, that's the, the hard part about it. Uh, working on that part of it. I'm 60 years old, so I feel very good and I have a lot of energy. And I like to continue with this program as long as I can because I found it is, is very good. And uh, I can stop now, I can change it now. I have to keep going and and, and I feel that Every day I can do even better. So in all, I must say that the program works. If you stick with the program, 
you dedicate it to it, and you try to improve yourself as you go along with the program. And you change, and you make a commitment in yourself and your attitude to change your attitude, to look at life differently. In fact, it forces you to look at life differently because now your body is getting a finer and a finer tune, especially if you have been studying self-improvement for some time you will see that there is a difference with the type of food that you are eating and doing those type of studies that you were not on the right path, you were halfway there. But now that I am eating the right food, I'm more into the greens, I've always been a veggie, but now I'm more committed to it because now I'm more I understand it better. I find that I can really and truly handle things and you begin to get finer and finer you begin to look at life differently. So my only thing is I want to continue the program. I want to stay on that type of program because I enjoy juicing in the morning. I enjoy eating the way I'm eating now. And all I have to say is that once you are in the program, you should try and stick with the program and make some definite changes in your life. It's worth it. So I appreciate uh, Gary's protocol, and I really do believe that basically it is the, uh, the enzyme-rich foods and staying on a very uh, clean, whole food diet that will do it. Some of the vitamins and minerals, I think they help certain people um, if they have, a de have, have that particular deficiency. With me, I think it was just calming down and staying on the green foods and what I will continue to do. And I'm very happy. So we've gotten into a culture that wants the quick fix, something we can watch on television and buy with just a phone call, something we can take once a day or once every other day. No, that's not this program. So I don't expect this to get very popular and I don't expect it to be used by too many people because it requires a commitment to changing your life. And we are a nation of comfort addicts. Any discomfort is too much. Ask the average American, what have you done for your health? And they'll say, well, I ate a bran muffin. Well, what else do you eat? Well, I have bacon, egg, eggs, and coffee, and sugar, and alcohol, and smoking, and I'm not exercising. I'm working in an environment I don't like, and I don't like the people I work with, and I don't got a good marriage, and my kids are on drugs. But outside of that, I did my health thing. I had my bran muffin. Yeah, health's a little bit more than that. Well, I believe that we can make some major changes. This shows we can. And so if you decide you want to, these people are just models of behavior. I'm Gary Nall. Thank you very much for watching.